AI solution and bring it there. So from my perspective, this means three things, or three um, strategies that you could apply. Uh, go for the biggest market, go for the biggest player, full steam ahead and all in. Obviously, uh, the winner takes it all. Or choose an attractive market, which is a combination of different languages with you know, uh, sufficient uh, lexical closeness. Um, choose a relevant and attractive footprint, play it fast and smart, so meaning target for more operators than just one, and, and do it in an intelligent way. Or you go for an exotic, exotic market like Finland, it has no lexical connectivity to any other country in the world, but um, yeah, you can do it there with the number one operator who's, you know, who's aiming for innovation or has a need for uh, innovation, and then you specialize in this market, there won't be that much of competition. So, now you have your market, uh, but which game plan are you gonna follow in this customer-facing eye solution? Are you gonna deploy a top-down big solution, which is bridge you everything from end to end, from the web to the IVR, to the call center, to the chat uh, agent, um, which is perhaps also integrated into your databases uh, that you have for marketing and products, or are you going bottom-up with trial and error on the hotspots? From my perspective, you should go for B because A, it, it has the higher aspiration and it has the clearer target picture and it's uh, uh, no, more, more skin in the game, you can, you can win. But B, I think it's, it's the real world. You've got to focus on hotspots you, that you're having and then try something and test it. If it's not working, you know, scrap it and do something else. So for example, our problem in customer facing is if RTD services is going down for a minute, you've got tens of thousands of people calling you, so you need flexible agents coming in at that point in time to help you on this hotspot to solve it. So that's what we are doing in Germany at Deutsche Telekom. We're doing a more bottom-up trial and error approach. Um, if you do this, um, what are four other things that you should take away from my two and a half years experience with AI? I think uh, the best thing is that you team up with humans, the AI solution with humans, you combine um, the most, or both powers or both good parts to the most powerful solution, um, that's for sure, we've heard it in other speeches already today, as well, more tactically speaking, there's a higher acceptance rate among um, employees, customers, and as well, fellow managers, if you're doing it that way, so that it's more acceptable uh, to be implemented. Be honest, whenever you're implementing an AI solution, Tell people up front who might get in contact with them. Make them even choose, like the customer, you can do this faster with an AI solution or you can do it you know, with a real contact and then it's slower. If you're implementing in the back office, tell the other agents that you're implementing it and what their beneficials are for them. Be relevant. If you are developing a car, you want to be the car key, you don't want to be the back seat, right? Do something which is on the hotspot. Don't do the checks chat. Do something which is, uh, also on the call side, real call conversations. People tend to call us in the customer service all the time. So, and even especially if we have breakdowns, they don't chat then with us. And be simple, I mean, it's clear and pretty straightforward. Be simple from a user perspective, like an agent using the AI solution or a customer, but also in the way you can be uh, connected to the architecture world in telcos, which tend to be pretty complex, because we're coming with a heritage, especially for big ones. Additionally, what are potential showcases that I might share with you from my perspective? Um, I think there's one which is help before help is required, I call it. Um, if, you, if you remember the picture at the very beginning of my talk, there was a smart home and you have everything to connect it to everything where. And there's also routers and, and switches from, from Turcos in this, in this home. You can predict when those routers and technical stuff might be have fa might having a failure in the next two days. And why don't you just inform the customer up front, well, reset your router and the CPU storage is critical um, and there won't be an outage. And as well in the same uh, area, you have everything which is connected with everything. You have your Sonos music system, you have your iOS 10 point whatever update, you have your switch, you have your SIM card. Everything can be combined with everything and it's really complex to have the oversight of this. So agents and customers, they want something which makes their life easier and simpler and better and solve their problems for them. And the other one is the local mom and pop store. I know you, we as operators, we now have a lot of data on how people are interacting with us, what they're using from us. 
um, how they like to be approached, what they want to buy from us, what their need is. And I think you can combine this in approaching people when they're in contact with you. Um, you can choose, well, you want to have the, uh, uh, the, the young lady with the business talk talking to you, or do you want to have the old tattooed guy uh, who's on the phone talking to you, and they are all offering you the right product. How to be successful uh, when working with um, operators? From my perspective, you have to be brave and encouraging, um, especially with incumbents. You have to create great and relevant demos. Um, you have to prove what you're promising, um, especially sometimes up front, and you've got to be trusted and serious, because um, often it's big projects within the telco space with direct impact on lots of customers and people's lives. Be user-centric and really impact-driven. Substitute calls, not only text chats. Not be the car key, not the rear back seat in the car, and go for the biggest impact. And as well, play it fast and smart. I think the language stuff, you've got to solve it. Be multilingual. Uh, solve the language kernel and enter the relevant market in quick ways. That would be my advice to you, and thanks for listening. That's a big question um, for all the operators around the world. I think there are 1,000 operators with all networks around the world, and they have the, uh, uh, the same question all over. Um, I do think it's right that a lot of will change and disrupt, but I do think as well that um, in the end, infrastructure is an asset. And fixed line infrastructure is something which is providing more bandwidth, more speed, um, um, which is keeping up with the increasing hunger of consuming data in our society than any wireless solution can do in the near future. Uh, but all the, near, all the solutions you've been mentioning in your question about that others are implementing, they are you know, disrupting those parts of our business model that we've been enjoying over the last years. But in the end, I think um, fixed line infrastructure is still more powerful but you've got to build a case around this and have, it, have a, a value add to this, not to be reduced to a bit pipe. First of all, I gotta congratulate you, the U.S. operator colleagues on their on their on their M&A deals. Um, they've, they have done smart moves, I think. There, um, obviously, that's a more strategic question. Um, do you want to buy Yahoo or, or AOL or whatever? Um, and from our perspective, we from Europe and not uh, so active in America, uh, we are not doing this. We're not pursuing this. Because uh, from our perspective, we see that there are certain areas that we are good at, and we focus on them. So we, we for example, divested our portal that we had in Europe and Germany. Uh, and there are other things that we want to partner on. Um, so that would be typically something we would partner on. Um, I hope that the guys who bought it, they will be successful with it. Um, but it's not quite clear whether this always turns out as the best thing. There have been other guys playing IOL um, you know, a couple of years back and it didn't turn out that well. Um, you always have to think of what you want to be and where you want to play and where you want to partner. And, but you're right. You have a lot of data, especially as a tech operator, and we are underutilizing this data. We can do more of that and we can even use it in a combined approach. But if I want to combine it, I don't have to buy AOL for this.
Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. I mean, we're, we're planning on, on utilizing our data, and we are, we are cooperating with um, smaller startups as well from yes and certain smaller um, uh, European markets that we're having to do real-time uh, price data plans uh, analysis and things like that. And uh, what those people are telling us, it's incredible how much data you have and you're not utilizing up to now. So that's, you're spot on. Ooh, uh, I'm, I know that there are people in my company who are expert in that, and I know that I'm not an expert in that, so I will leave it up to them. I'm sorry for that. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.